eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Please open my open eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, because I, I want to see you. Hi. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, February the 19th. We'll sing a few songs, of their, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope you will find interesting, enlightening, and hopefully beneficial to you. We sing here at Northfield from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the number and the name of the song, just in case you don't have that book and you can find the song, and hopefully sing along with us. And so if you would, if you would turn your songbooks, this is Songs of Faith and Praise, to number 457, 457, the title of this song is How Firm a Foundation. How Firm a Foundation. <clears throat> How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith. In his excellent name, on more can he say than to you he has said, you who run to Jesus for refuge have fled. Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed. I, I am your God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand upheld by my gracious, omnipotent hand. The soul that on Jesus has leaned for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell shall endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Number 422, Spirit of the Living God. 422, Spirit of the living God. <clears throat> Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God fall fresh on me. And before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 315, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, 415. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. When I survey the wondrous cross. <clears throat> when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. 
My riches gain I count but loss and bargain tempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my Lord. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to His blood. See from His head, His hands, His feet, Sorrow and love flow mingle down. Did there such love and sorrow meet? Or thorns compose so rich a cry? As we are instructed to do on the first day of the week, uh, we're going to gather around the Lord's table to break bread. When we do that, uh, we uh, remember uh, the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. The song that we just sang reminds us to survey that wondrous cross on which uh, the Prince of Glory died. And uh, some of the words there are, are very telling to us. We're, we are to see his head, his hands, his feet. What we're seeing, the sorrow of the cross. Yet through the sorrow, we see the love that God had for us and that Jesus had for us, that he was willing to go to the cross. Uh, the song goes on and says, Did e'er such love and sorrow meet or thorns compose so rich a crown? It is amazing just the thought that Jesus died for our sins and we just uh, just need always to have this on our hearts. We ought to take this time as we gather about the table as a serious and somber time reflecting on the sacrifice that Jesus made. Uh, we have two emblems that represent his body and that represent his blood. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we remember the body of our Savior who died upon Calvary's tree for us. And when we do survey the wondrous cross, help us to understand that uh, this was gain for us, that through Jesus' sacrifice, that we have the opportunity for eternal life. We think of his body racked in pain and that he did this for us. Bless us as we partake of this bread. We ask this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. That Jesus shed his innocent blood for us is just awesome and amazing to all of us. He didn't have to do that. He did it for the sins of the world. He did it for mankind. He did it for you and he did it for me. And so let's make sure that when we partake of the bread and we partake of the cup, that we remember and personalize it, that we remember that he did this for me, that he did this for you. He shed his innocent blood that our sins might be forgiven. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that uh, Jesus shed his innocent blood. We know the importance of blood in a human body. 
we know that it is that life-giving substance that moves things about the body. And help us to remember that the blood that Jesus shed is life-giving for each one of us. It has in it all of that we need to uh, have our sins forgiven and washed away. And in that, we can one day spend eternity with you. Bless us as we partake. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper being completed, at this time we, as we are supposed to do on the first day of the week, think of giving back to the Lord. This was done throughout the history of God's people. Uh, in, in the book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 2, it talks about that. It talks about that uh, he wanted Israel to make a contribution, and that contribution would be from their hearts. It hasn't changed God still wants us to give from our heart. He wants us to lay by and store because he's prospered us that we may give back and help us to understand that in giving back, uh, we have the opportunity to, to uh, spread the word to all the world. We have the opportunity to help those that are in need because we as a church are benevolent. Uh, 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 group. Uh, pray with me as we think about giving back to the Lord. We thank you so much, dear Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to give back. We know through your word that you tell us that uh, you love a, a giver that is cheerful in his heart. We understand that giving back to you is just giving you back your own. Bless us as we give. Help us to do uh, so with an open heart Help us to be cheerful, help us to show gratitude, and help these monies to be used to further your work. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is number 681. It's called More Holiness Give Me. Beautiful song. 681. More holiness give me, more strivings within, more patience and suffering, more sorrow for sin, more faith in my Savior, more sense of his care. More joy in his service, more purpose in prayer, more gratitude give me, more trust in the Lord, more pride in his glory, more hope in his word. More tears for his sorrows, more pain at his grief, more meekness and trial, more praise for relief, more purity give me, more strength to overcome. More freedom from earth stains, more longings for home, more fit for his kingdom, more useful I'd be, more blessed and holy, more savior like me. This concludes the singing part of our service in the Lord's Supper. And uh, now I have a message for you that I hope will uh, be beneficial uh, to us. It's not long, but uh, hopefully uh, I will say some things that will touch your heart and and uh, will be thought-provoking and will uh, just uh, resonate to you. 
in some way that um, you'll give thought to it. You'll give pause and maybe you'll be a Berean and you'll study it out for yourself. The title of my lesson this evening is, Where Are You Planted? Where are you planted? Hmm. Is it a provocative uh, thought? A provocative question? Everyone's planted somewhere. Um, we're planted in our surroundings. We were born into a family. Uh, for a period of time, we grew with that family. We went out our, uh, on our own. Many of us formed our own families. We decided what we wanted to do with our lives, and uh, our work became a part of our surroundings. Every day we went somewhere, uh, and uh, we did something that we hopefully wanted to do. Our, our lifestyle. Uh, the things that we uh, do, uh, the hobbies that we might have, the, the books that we might read, the things that take up our time and the things that take up our energy. Uh, this is where we're planted as human beings. The first Psalm takes this a very, very important step further. The first Psalm says, How blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Here is the part of this verse that I want us to pay attention to this evening. It says, he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. And so the psalmist uh, compares the life of a human being. And for our intents and purposes, the life of a Christian to a tree. And it says that that tree is planted, firmly planted by streams of living water. Now, before that, the psalmist tells us we're not to be planted. We are not to be planted in the counsel of the wicked or in the path of sinners or in the seat of scoffers. The blessed man meditates in God's word day and night. And then he gives that illustration of a tree that is firmly planted by streams of water whose leaves do not wither. And he says, the one who delights in the law of the Lord will be like that tree. And so, as I said when I introduced this lesson, everybody is planted somewhere. Look at our surroundings. What, what do we see? I hopefully, uh, uh, let me, let me make sure I get the wording right. I hope that we don't see ourselves walking in the counsel of the wicked. I hope that we don't stand in the path of sinners. I hope that we don't sit in the seat of scoffers. What do we surround ourselves with? I would propose that what we surround ourselves with is a spiritual tree. <laughs> what you surround yourself with, 
will impact you as a spiritual tree. Now, if you're not planted in the right place, you'll wither. We have the parable of the sower, where the sower sought seed. All of the seed was the same. The difference in the way the seed germinated and grew and was productive is where it was planted. I think the point that the author is trying to make, and that's Jesus, is that our spiritual tree will wither and fade away if it's not planted in the right place. But if we plant ourselves in the law of the Lord, if we plant ourselves in godly things and godly surroundings, our spiritual tree will blossom. It will grow. It will not wither away. And so, you know, we're likened in the Bible to all kinds of things. We're likened to builders, sheep. John 15 tells us that like branches, Jesus tells us we're the salt of the earth, the light of the world. He tells us that we're withering grass, fading flowers. But in, in Psalm 1-1, he compares us to a tree, a planted tree, planted by the rivers of water. As a Christian, where have we been planted? Well, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 5 says, Don't you know that every one of you have been baptized, have been baptized into Jesus Christ? It says, You have been buried with him in baptism. We've been planted with him in baptism. We bury a seed into the ground, don't we? So that the plant will come forth. When we're buried with the Lord in baptism, when we come, at, come up out of the waters, we have been planted in that baptism. And now we are to go forth and grow as Christians. A tree a tree is a rooted thing. Christians are rooted. They're built up in Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 lets us know that we have been firmly rooted. Now, you know what? It's not instant, is it? We don't plant a seed and the next day, think that it will be a full-grown plant sprouting fruit. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a farmer, but I lived on 10 acres of ground as a young person. We had a garden, and we also raised some crops to sell. But they did not come up overnight. In my backyard right now, uh, my son came over and he planted some raspberry bushes. Love raspberries. Right now, you can't tell that they're alive. They're just kind of sticks. And it takes a while. Come springtime, the next thing you know, and it's what, it's February 19th. Uh, that's just uh, uh, less, about a month away. Buds will start to form very, very gradually. The trees will come into bloom. Plants will produce their fruits. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time for a person to become established and rooted in faith. The book, the writer of the book of Hebrews reminds us when he says, by now you ought to be teachers, but you've lacked in the elementary principles. There is a time when a person, as a Christian, will change from the simple milk of God's word to the deeper things, to the, the, the solid food of the Lord's word. 
And that's what we try to do. We don't randomly open our Bibles, but we look for things that will help us. A tree is a growing thing. Notice, by the rivers of water. So that it has that important water there. The law of nature demands that a tree grows. And the law of God demands that his children grow. Peter explains that in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, where he says that we are supposed to grow in respect to salvation. Now, we all want to live with the Lord forever, but it's how we grow and how we mature and how we live our lives, which will deem whether we live with the Lord forever or for not. We, we are like a tree. And how we, uh, how we, uh, make sure that we have the nutrients necessary to grow in respect to the, the physical growth of the tree is how we are to grow as Christians. It, it's hard for a tree to grow out of its native climate, just as it's hard for Christians to grow the way they should in certain environments. We have that famous scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33, where Paul says, don't doubt this. Bad company corrupts good morals. Now, that's not to say we're not to go into the world and preach the word. That's what the Great Commission says. But in going into the world, we can't become part of the world because that will corrupt us tree is a living thing. It lives in all seasons. Those raspberry plants that I'm talking about in my backyard are alive right now. They don't look alive, but they are alive. God made us living creatures from the very beginning in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, where he made man out of the dust of the earth and breathed the breath into his, nos into his nostrils. Jesus said in John chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live forever. will be like that tree that is nourished and will be healthy. The tree is a beautiful thing. Few things in nature are more beautiful than a tree. I'm reminded of, of Joyce Kilmer's a poem about a, a tree. Um, nothing is more beautiful for God than a tree, us, that lives a godly life. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 15, it says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. That's what we are to be. And finally, a tree is a fruitful thing. God's children must bear fruit. Now, some of the fruit are the inner virtues that we have. For example, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, the virtues we are to engender as Christians. But uh, in the Great Commission, when Jesus said, go preach the word to all the world, teaching them, you know, teaching them the truth of God's word, baptizing them for the remission of their sins, this was put in our hands. God says, be fruitful. When we give money back to the church, we give it in hope that some of these monies will be spent on evangelism. We give to churches in foreign countries because we can't visit those countries, but we can send money to people who are teaching there so people may come to the Lord. And so I hope this evening that uh, I struck a resonant note with you. Where are we planted? 
Are we planted like a tree? Are we planted by the rivers of water? Are we rooted? Are we growing? Are we truly alive for the Lord? Are we beautiful in the eyes of the Lord? And finally, are we fruitful for the Lord? All of these things are things that we must answer in our hearts if we expect to live with the Lord forever. And so we go back to uh, Romans chapter 5, uh, 6 verses 3 to 5, and, and understand that a Christian is a planted thing. We were planted the moment that we accepted Jesus into our life. When we confessed him as the Son of God, when we repented of our sins and were baptized for the remission and forgiveness of those sins. It is only then that we receive that gift of the Holy Spirit. If you have not taken that step and you want to be like that planted tree, you want to be planted by the rivers of water, I offer you the invitation to start your life as a Christian. If you need to come to the Lord, uh, we are a phone call away. We can help you. We will be at your beck and call when you need us. If you need to come to the Lord, now would be the time. Let's close our service with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we had together this evening to study a portion of your word, perhaps to understand a little bit about where and how we are planted as Christians. Hopefully, as the first psalm lets us know that we're like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its seasons. Help us to be that planted, rooted, and growing Christian, that entity that you want us to be, that we will be beautiful for you and that we will be fruitful for you. Bless us in our Christian walk. Help us to be godly. Help us to pray for those that need our prayers. Help us to have those people on our hearts as we talk to you in respect to those that we care about or that uh, brothers and sisters of ours care about. Be with us in our Christian walk. Help us to be firmly planted by the rivers of waters. Be with us this evening. Help us to look forward to the next time that we get to meet with you. Uh, be with us. Bless us. We pray this in your son's most holy name. Amen. I pray that all of you will be safe and may God bless you all. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open my eyes, Lord.